AI is empowering artists to create 3D textures and atlases easily and efficiently. Today, I'm going to show you how to implement AI into your texturing workflow. Hi, my name is Leah Kopke. I'm a School of Motion student mentor and 3D motion design freelancer. We are going to start out by going through some of the settings available at withpoly.com to help you create your own custom textures and atlases. Creating complex textures is time consuming. AI helps make it easier and faster. An atlas is a term more commonly used for gaming. There are multi-atlas textures and single atlas textures. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to focus on a single atlas texture. A single atlas texture is a UV mapping texture used to texture one object. They will have parts of a model laid out in 2D nested together. Using an atlas instead of multiple textures for texturing an object helps games run without lag and it helps motion designers create textures for objects with complex surfacing. We'll also cover how to create seamless textures with AI. A seamless texture is a texture that can be tiled without any seam showing. They can be used for mapping such as cylindrical or cubic mapping. Before we move on, make sure to hit subscribe and hit the like button if you find this video helpful. So here we are inside of With Poly, and we're going to create some atlases and textures. But the first thing you'll need to do before we get started is you'll need to hit this Create Account button here, and that will allow you to create an account. I've already created one, and this is what it'll look like once you create an account, except I've already created some textures and you'll get to save your past textures that you've created in here. And you can choose to create a new texture here or a new atlas texture here. Right now we're in my library, but you can also go to here to create a texture or an atlas. Let's first start off with creating a texture. So I'll go ahead and hit create here. And here at this world icon, you can explore different templates that are available and they might give you some ideas of what you can do. This is a nice template here. If you'd like to create your own from scratch, you can also go over to this creator button here and we can start new. So I'm going to name this texture Chicago red brick one in case if we make more than one and I'm going to put into this prompt what I would like AI to create for me so I'll type in Chicago red brick texture and then we can hit generate patterns and we might need to wait a few seconds while AI is generating some options for us. And here we are, we have some red brick options that AI has created. Let's say I'm not happy with any of these. I can hit generate patterns again, and it will give us some more options of what we can work with. So this is getting better. I want to see some more options. So I think that I like this one in the lower right. So that's what I'll move ahead with. And for the next step, you once you find a texture that you like out of the options, you can go under step number two, which is called enhanced texture. After the initial recording of this tutorial, tile generation and tile diversity are no longer settings and instead they've been replaced with a new setting called patch scale. And one way to think of this is when they refer to the patch, they're referring to the initial texture that you had generated up here. And the patch scale, they mean, what is its scale relative to the edges that will be created? So along the edges with Poly, we'll add on additional pixels to make sure that this texture is seamless. 
So you can control that scale with the slider down here. So let's jump back into the rest of the settings. So under Enhanced Texture, choose the texture you'd like to move forward with. This one's actually pretty nice too. I like the level of contrast in this one and how much variation there is. The next option is you can upscale your resolution. So right now we have 1K as the default, but we can make this texture smaller, 512, if you want to have a smaller texture with lower resolution, or you can make it 2K. So I'll choose 2K for right now. You can choose tile generation. And what this will do is it'll repeat this texture um, so that it tiles and you can choose the tile diversity. So when it creates that next texture beside it and tiles it, you can choose how different that tiled part is from the first part you've created that you can see here. I think that this is a, a good size where I don't feel like I need to do the tile generation, but that is an option and so that you know what these do in case if you see that this would work best for your project, now you know how to do it. And once you have all of that set up and you're happy with your settings, you can click Enhance Texture. And we might need to wait a few minutes because it's processing but it should only take a minute or two. So once that processes, it'll show us a little bit of a preview of what our brick will look like. If you use the scroll button, you can zoom in or zoom out. And you can drag your mouse and click on this to move it around to see it. In step number three, because our texture isn't done yet, we get to choose what kind of material it is. Is it a natural, raw, organic material, a polished material, which will be a more reflective material? Brick isn't usually reflective, so that won't work for this. Or is it fabric? Then it'll have a little bit of a sheen to it, but be more matte. I think that what we have here with our brick is definitely in the natural category, and that will help inform this while it's creating a roughness map. So make sure you click the right one from these. You can choose to check mark this, which will allow you to create a height map, and it will create both a displacement and a normal map if you have that selected. You can choose to invert height maps. Sometimes that helps, it's up to you. I tend to just adjust it inside of Redshift so that it works. So I'm not too concerned about that. And with all of that done, we can go ahead and hit generate PBR maps. So I'll click this button here and it will begin to apply these options to this map. So it won't stay looking this flat anymore. So here we are, our texture just came in. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see it. And you'll notice that our displacement map is going the wrong way. Sometimes that happens. It's easy to correct inside of Redshift, so I'm not really too concerned about it. If you'd like to fix it, you can click on this eye up here and change the displacement scale to be in the negative direction. And now you can see that our grout is, is a little bit deeper than the red brick. You can choose how much this is going to tile, so we can see that there and you can choose the lighting strength. That won't change how it looks once you take it into Cinema 4D, but it changes how it previews. And also when you click here, you can choose to view it as an infinite canvas, and you can drag your mouse to see more of it. You can view it as a color map. You can view it with all of your patterns that you originally generated. Here I'm going to go back to 3D view and I'm going to hit export in order to get these out of with poly and into Cinema 4D. And you can click download as zip. And now we're exporting our assets. So this is our first texture. But before we be bring this into Cinema 4D, I also want to show you how to create an Atlas texture and export it. 
but what I will do is show you what this looks like. So here we are and you can see that it's created a roughness map, a normal map, a color map, and a displacement map. And these will all be really helpful once we bring these into Redshift and Cinema 4D. So what we'll do next is instead of creating textures, we'll create an atlas. I'll click down here to create a new atlas. And you can see some examples here. This one's of a sunflower. This one's of cherry blossoms. You can create ones of leaves. And there's plenty of great options here to give you some inspiration. I'm going to start off with a blank and I will name this Daisy. And I'll hit generate patterns and just like before AI will do some calculations and it will generate some options for us. This one's pretty nice. This one's a nice one too, but it's a little bit cut off. So what I may do is hit generate patterns again to see if we can get anything better. I like the amount of detail on this one. It seems like there's a little bit more. So I'm going to move forward with this one. You can choose which one of your textures you want to move forward with. You can choose the resolution you'd like. I think 1K is plenty for our resolution. But just in case, I'm going to take it up to 2K. And down here, you can choose if you'd like a displacement map, a normal map, or if you'd like to invert the maps. I don't think we need to invert the maps for this. It's up to you if you'd like a normal map. I'm going to mainly focus on the displacement map but I think this will work for right now. So once we have these selected, we can hit Enhance Atlas and it'll run some calculations and we'll get to see a preview of what our atlas will look like. So here we are and you can see our atlas and we can turn it around by just clicking and dragging in our viewport. And similar to when we created a texture, you can click up here and you can choose how you'd like to preview it. You can preview the original patterns you've chosen from. You can view the color map. Or you could see it in 3D. You can choose your graphics quality here. And that's how detailed the preview will be. You can adjust the displacement as needed. And you can even adjust the lighting strength if you'd like. I think this is looking pretty good. So the next step would be to export this. So I'll go ahead and hit export and download it as a zip file. I'll go ahead and unzip this file and show you what it looks like. All right, so here we can see our maps that we've created. We have a color map, a normal map, and a displacement map. So now we get to take all of these into Cinema 4D. I hope you've learned a lot so far. If you'd like to become more familiar with texturing, Cinema 4D, and Redshift, check out Cinema 4D Ascent to take your skills to the next level. Links are in the description. So here I have a project file. You can download this if you'd like to use it. I am using this just to show as an example of what you can do with your textures. I've already actually added in the daisy texture here. So I'll go ahead and unhide this. So you can add in your own atlas texture within here. And something else fun you can try with your Atlas texture is you can have a little bit more control over it by maybe using some deformers. You could 
add in a spherify deformer or a bend deformer to adjust your stem or your flower. So you can do some other things in order to get it to look the way you'd like it to. We'll also still need to add a texture to this wall. So what I'll need to do is create a material under Redshift Materials, and then make sure to click Material right here instead of Standard. And I'll rename this Chicago Brick. This is the wall over here. I've already built a wall for you to texture, and I've even added a Redshift Object tag here. So you already have displacement turned on, so as soon as you make your texture, the displacement will show up on your wall. I'll drag and drop our Chicago brick texture onto the wall. And let's start building it. I'm going to turn off the IPR for right now, which was giving us a nice preview. And here are the textures that I've exported out of with Poly. I can select all of these and drag and drop them into our node editor. And now we can start building our texture. So what we'll need to do is take our color map and make this our diffuse color. We'll need our roughness map to control our reflection roughness. It's really nice that with Poly even gives you the roughness maps. I don't think I'm going to use the normal map. If you'd like to use the normal map, you can for your project. I'm going to delete it for right now because I think the displacement map gives us some really nice detail. But in order to use the displacement map, we'll need to add in a displacement node. So I'll add that in right here. And I open that again under Create Add Node. And then start typing in displacement. Drag and drop this in here. And then I'll link up our displacement map as our texture map. And I'll link up this to our displacement in our output. And if you want to have a preview of how that will look, we can turn on IPR again under Redshift. And now we're starting to see a preview. You'll notice that our texture may look a little bit stretched, so we need to change it from UVW mapping to cubic mapping because this is a seamless texture so it's not meant to be used with UVW mapping we need to use it with one of these options cubic makes the most sense for walls because they're already very much so a cubic shape and with that done you can adjust the length in the U and length in the V direction so now I've made the brick a little bit bigger and we can see more of that detail within that AI texture we've created. While many are saying AI will replace artists, I predict it will be a tool that helps artists. At one time, it was said that the camera would replace artists and now we're advancing our careers with it. What are your thoughts on AI and what it means for artists? Drop them in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to be notified when we release our next tutorials and to stay up to date on the latest Cinema 4D and Redshift news. Head to schoolofmotion.com to check out our interactive online curriculum and let our team know if you have any questions at all. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in another video real soon.